Some men say the earth is round and some men say it is flat. But if it is round, can a command of the parliament make it flat? And if it is flat, could the king order it to be round? These are the words used by St. Thomas More in defense of himself, representing himself in his own trial for high treason in which he was accused, of course, of refusing to acknowledge that the king was the head of the church on earth. We all know the outcome. The government separated his head from the rest of his body. But when he was making this argument to the jury, he was, of course, appealing not only to their common sense. Of course, the parliament couldn't make a round earth flat. And of course, the king couldn't make a flat earth round. He was also appealing to their understanding of the natural law, of the order in things, of the way a divine creature or a force of nature, whether you are religious or secular, created things and of our need to pursue happiness by complying with the law of nature. He knew what Aristotle and Augustine and Aquinas had written. He could almost anticipate what Locke and Jefferson would write. And Locke, of course, would repeat this and Jefferson would repeat this as well, that we have natural rights, that they come from our humanity, that they don't come from the government. At least those were the arguments that uh, were made by these wonderful people who advanced this argument of the natural law. When we were a colony, when we were colonies, and the king and the parliament had wanted to raise money, they had ingenious ways of doing so. One of the most offensive was the Stamp Act. Parliament enacted a law that required every piece of paper in your home, every book, every pamphlet, every legal document, even a poster you were going to nail to a tree, have the king's image on it. You think it's rough going to the post office today? You had to go to a foreign post office and buy an image of the king. Question, how did the king and the parliament 3,000 miles away know if you had in your home the king's image and every piece of paper? Answer, parliament enacted an abomination called the Townsend Acts, which authorized British soldiers to write their own search warrants. So a British soldier would show up at your house and knock on the door and hand you a piece of paper in which he had authorized himself to come in, ostensibly to look for the stamps. But of course, while there, they might help themselves to food, to alcohol, to furniture. They might even help themselves to the house, which is why we have the Third Amendment, which prohibits quartering troops in a private home against the wishes of the owner. The Stamp Act was really the last straw it was the only one of the oppressive acts that Parliament actually repealed in an effort to quell the colonists from their rebellious ways. We fought a revolution. We won the revolution. We wrote a constitution. In 1787, they had a great debate, and the debate went back to what Moore said at his trial and what Locke had written and what Aristotle, Augustine, and Aquinas had written. Where do our liberties come from? Do they come from our humanity or do they come from the government? Hamilton and the big government people at, 17, at Philadelphia in 1787 said there can be no freedom without government. Government protects freedom and government knows when to restrict it and when to expand it. And as long as the government is subject to the will of the people, as long as the majority rules, freedom will be safe. Jefferson, who wasn't there but argued through Madison, and Madison directly argued that this was nonsense, that our freedom comes from our humanity, that our right to think as we wish, to say what we think, to publish what we say, to worship or not to worship, our right to defend ourselves, our right to keep and bear arms, our right to life, to liberty, to the pursuit of happiness, our right to be left alone. After the right to life, that's my favorite, the right to be left alone, that, the, that these, these rights come from our humanity.